Hello, and welcome to Explore Analytics. Today, we're going to walk through the most classic report of service management, incidents opened, resolved, or backlog. This is a foundational core report for understanding the volume of work coming into a service organization. This video will use uh, IT incidents, but you could use this for service requests, HR cases, any sort of custom workload, and you can even combine multiple categories together. The incidents open, resolved, and backlog is being able to track over time how many incidents were opened, how many were closed, and then based on how many were open and closed, what's left over at the end of each day or week or month, which is the backlog. So for example, here you can see on November 2nd, 64 incidents were opened, only 38 were resolved, so that backlog grew by 26. In ServiceNow, it's a little bit tricky to get that backlog component because ServiceNow doesn't track how many incidents were open at the end of every day or every week or every month. So you can see how many are currently open, but you can't see that backlog trend historically. So with Explore Analytics, we make it very simple. In fact, we have two different approaches to doing this. The first and most best practice way is to use Explore Analytics' track trend capability. The track trend capability stores the information that we were just discussing. Every time the track trend job runs, it counts how many incidents are currently open and saves it within Explore Analytics. So you can now report against it the same way you'd report against any other data in ServiceNow. The second approach, which, which can also be appropriate in some cases, is to use real-time calculations. What you do is you report on the data that ServiceNow has, which is how many were opened and how many were closed. And then you take the opened minus the closed plus the remainder from the previous open and closed. The disadvantage of the running total approach is that it assumes that you're reporting from the very beginning of the data set. If you filter on opened and closed this year, for example, you're going to miss incidents that were left over in the backlog from last year. That's why we typically recommend using the track trend as a, as a best practice. However, if you are reporting against the entire set of data, the advantage of the running total approach is that it doesn't require the track chain job to run. So you can construct the backlog going into the past, whereas the track trend only captures the information moving forward. So long as you're clear about that key assumption that you have to report the running total calculation against the whole data, running total can definitely have a place. And that's why we'll show you both approaches. They're both fairly straightforward and quick, so we'll have time to teach you how to do both. So let's get to it. Let's go to Explore Analytics. The way that we do this is that we'll create a report for each of the data sets individually, and then we'll perform a mashup to combine them. Regardless of whether using track trend or calculations for the backlog, the trend of incidents opened and the trend of incidents closed are going to be created the same way. So let's start there. I'm going to go and I'm going to create a new report. I'm going to select my ServiceNow environment as the data source. And I'm going to select the incident table. Although you could do the same for security incidents or HR cases or service requests. I'm going to call this my trend of uh, incidents opened for the video. And I'm going to select a chart. So we want to create a timeline to be able to track this information. So I'll select timeline. Now let's get the information that we want within this opened. We're gonna say we want to look at this grouped by when the incidents were opened. Uh, and for this case, let's do by week. Now a very important step that I see a lot of people skip that's uh, very critical is the value field needs to be unique. So rather than leaving it as the default count, I'm going to relabel this to say incidents opened. Again, this is going to mean that when we start combining our data sets together, we're not going to be accidentally adding things together. We want them to display side by side. We're going to give this a unique name. Now, this is an optional step, but just to show you, I'm going to add the animation. This is going to give the user a dropdown that allows them to select which assignment group they're going to see the data for. So by default, it's going to show me all, but I'll also be able to say, show that to me for the database team or for the hardware team, etc. So that's it. We now have everything that we need to add that trend of incidents opened. 
adding the trend of resolved is gonna be even easier because we're gonna use this as a template. I'm gonna to go to the file menu. I'm gonna say make a, a copy. I'm gonna call this trend of incidents resolved. And then we're just gonna make a couple quick tweaks to turn this report into the other one. I'm going to switch it from when it was opened by week to when it was resolved by week. I'm gonna change that value label to say incidents resolved. Again, so that we have unique value field labels. And lastly, this is mostly for the um, running total calculation approach, but we wanna filter so that we're only seeing where the resolved is not empty, right? Within ServiceNow, that's how we, we distinguish between the ones that have at some point been resolved versus the ones that have never been resolved. Uh, that's going to protect it from throwing off the running total calculation. Great, so now we have these two reports, one that's showing incidents open, the other one that's showing incidents resolved, and we can combine them together. So now let's combine those two reports together. I'm gonna go to the file menu, I'm gonna select new mashup view, and we'll call this my incidents opened, resolved, and backlog. And we're gonna select from the reports that we have before. Again, this is using an autocomplete, so I can select my opened and my closed. So now I have both data sets here, uh, and I'm actually going to, in this blue header bar, select merged. That means that they're going to use the same y-axis because we're counting the same thing, which is count. I can see that I now have this uh, uh, animation because it was present in both reports. So I can see the same set of data for hardware, for database, uh, or for all. And again, because I gave the values individual names from the two reports, they're not combining, they're being shown. So again, whether you're using the track trend approach or whether you're using the running total calculation approach, I have it all in one it, all of these steps have been the same between the two. So now let's take a look at, at adding the backlog. First, let's take the steps of the track trend approach. The way that we do a track trend is that we're going to create a live report and then we're going to track its results over time. So I want to get a report that shows me what are the currently open incidents. So I'm gonna create this on the incident table in ServiceNow. Backlog input video. Now you could create this as a chart or a pivot, but I like to use pivots for my uh, track trend inputs just so that I can easily see what data is being collected. The most important thing is that I need to filter on where active is true so that we're only looking at the open incidents. Uh, again, you could also do this using state or using whatever other criteria tells you what's currently open. And I'm going to want to group this by whatever data we're going to want to later report on. So in this case, we know we want to slice it by assignment group. That's that animation that we saw. But in the future, maybe we want to do the same report with priority. Or maybe we're going to want to do the same with uh, which service offering or, or what have you. There's no real negative impact to adding more of these than you think you will need it's much easier to add and then not use them later than to later decide you want to group by priority or by category and not have it in that report. So right now I'm just gonna have these two levels of grouping, uh, but just know that the best practice is to add as many dimensions uh, as you think you might need later. And rather than calling this count, I'm going to call this backlog so that it's easy for us to reference later. So this is a real-time report. It's showing me that the ACME support has five open critical, has two open high, 10 open moderate. But we don't want this just for now. We wanna be able to track this over time so we can build this backlog report. So I'm gonna to go to the file menu and select track trend. It's going to ask me to put uh, name the table that I want to put this on. So we'll call this backlog trend table and a schedule, daily, weekly, or monthly that we want to track this on. In this case, what we saw before was weekly on Monday. And now once I click finish, every week on Monday, it's going to run those this report and save the results to Explore Analytics. I can take a look at these track trend jobs by going to the admin menu, selecting track trend jobs. The input view is going to be that report that I just created, so I can come back and edit it. 
and the table is where that data is being stored. Now, for the purposes of this video, I actually already created that backlog trend table and, and gathered some data so that we can explore how we would build a report on that. Once we have that tr trend table and it has some data, I can go to New View. In this case, we're going to use the Explore data source because that's where data that's saved to Explore Analytics is stored. So I'm going to select Explore. And the table that I want is going to be Backlog Trend Table. And we're going to create a chart uh, and we're going to call that trend of backlog for video. Again, we want this to be a timeline so it matches the other ones. We're going to use that date component, uh, but we want it by week. And rather than having the count, what we want to have is to drag the backlog and it's going to sum up the backlog. And we're just going to make sure it's called backlog. And we're going to select the animation to be assignment group so that it also can be sliced and diced by assignment group. So again, now I can look at the backlog with analysts or what have you. So again, in the real world, this is going to have less data when you first create it because it's not, it's going to uh, need to track that data over time. But in this case, I've, I have some data for my backlog trend going back into the past. So now let's go back to that mashup that we created, the My Incidents Opened, Resolved, and Backlog. So we have the Incidents Opened and Resolved. I'm going to go into Edit Input Views, Add Input View, and I'm going to look for that Trend of Backlog video. So now we have the incidents that are opened, resolved, and backlog for that set of data. Now, often in the header bar, what you can do is say, let's show this as a combo chart uh, so that we can say, show the opened as a bar, show the backlog as a line. And now you can easily see that for any particular group or, or what have you. Congratulations, you've generated this uh, open, resolved, and backlog chart using the uh, track trend job. Now I'm going to show you how you can do the same, but with a running total calculation. Again, remember the caveats at the beginning, but we can very easily put this together. So I'm going to remove that trend of backlog from the video. I'm going to go back to this report. And instead of adding in another uh, report, the way that the track trend, the way that the running total calculation is going to work is I'm going to click this calculator to create a calculated value. And I'm going to select the opened minus the closed, uh, the resolved. So we're going to use that data that we already have in this report to generate a new calculated value. And we'll call this the backlog. Now, the eagle-eyed viewers out there may realize that what I just created was really a delta, right? The number that were opened minus the number that were closed. In order to truly turn this into a backlog, I need to edit this that I just created and select to display as running total. What that'll do is it'll take the open minus the resolved and it'll add in whatever is left over from the previous week's calculation. So now we can see that the backlog is generated. It's looking at the opened minus the resolved plus whatever was left over in the previous period and it's generating that backlog over time. Again, you could do a lot of different things with this. Using the mashup, you could also add multiple sets of data. So if you wanted to add the service requests opened plus the incidents that were opened minus the incidents plus service requests that were resolved to create kind of a, an overall backlog, you could do the same. There's a lot that you could take this further, but as you can see, it's very quick and easy using one of two approaches to get this incident opened resolved and backlog. Check out the other videos on this uh, YouTube channel for uh, more great use cases uh, and otherwise good luck exploring your data.